You have to respect your investor and look at what your investor is giving you. And uh, I think a lot of people in the startup community don't understand that an investor is selling you a product and that product is finance. And they're looking for a, a return on that. <laughs> that's, that's their industry, that's their business. I think if startups begin to understand that, they begin to understand why investors are looking for feedback and looking for knowledge. They're looking to protect their investment and see are they going to do it. Keeping that door open and constantly feeding back to your investors about what you're doing and what your challenges are. Uh, like a good board of advisors, you know, you should consider them as being on your team, uh, being able to, to help you out with things and being able to give you, you know, they, they are investors but they're also uh, advisors who want you to succeed for many reasons including the fact that they've invested in you. So, you know, I think keeping them close, keeping them up to date, there's nothing investors like less than you know surprises you know why did you make that strategic call or you know what why did you put that pricing proposal out into the market without you know vetting it first in a number of different directions so they like process they like visibility and transparency and they like engagement and I think you know if you're a startup who has investors you get very structured around those things if you've got a good relationship with your investors. The worst thing an investor likes to hear is a phone call at four o'clock on Friday evening with we have a big problem especially when you know that they had the problem since Tuesday and didn't bother to pick up the phone and, and call. So proactivity about communication I think is very important. There's nothing static in the investor startup relationship. It's really something that evolves over time and you see opportunities to input at many different stages along the, the route. So, you know, I think where that uh, communication is very open and punctual and brief but punctual, um, I think that's where you get the most value on both sides. As angel investors, the best way to consider them is to see them as advisors, um, not necessarily as friends, but at least as advisors uh, who you have nothing to fear from. I think monthly reports should be shared with your investors. They'll look for things, they'll have experience of what's happening in the past and they may very well help you get over that hump that you're struggling with at that moment in time. So I think um, one startup I was involved in that was very successful at that was they sent a monthly newsletter to, to their investors um, and it was an email. The CEO wrote it at half four on a Friday evening and gave himself from half four to five on the last Friday of the month. He didn't make it too long, too complicated, but just said, this is what happened this month. And he sent it to all the investors, his angel investors, his uh, venture investors, um, his enterprise Ireland investors. But he gave himself a half hour last Friday every month just to kind of say, state of the nation, this is where we are. Um, which is a good way to be proactive and to keep people informed and keep people comfortable, which is then more likely to then to help them to potentially invest further into the future. So I think being proactive in terms of communication is very good. You know, being professional with your investors and delivering on things that you say you're going to deliver on is very important in any business relationship. So I think having that kind of structured approach of communication um, and that request for feedback is good and being professional about it. But, you know, trusting them, having that relationship where, you know, you can trust them and you can go to their networks and say, I see that you know X, Y and Z person. Here's what I'd like to talk to them about. Can you introduce them?